welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa we begin our lecture as is our practice by the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड on the tatpurusha samasa tatpurusha samasa is one of the four major types of samasas in sanskrit the four are avyayi bhav tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva in that order as stated in the grammar of panini in the text of ashtadhyayi tatpurusha samasa is by far the most productive of the samasas panini has also spent considerable amount of time and also space in terms of the number of sutras in dealing with the tatpurusha samasa in comparison with the other types of samasas be it samasa vidhayaka sutra or samasa anta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra और स्वर विधायक सूत्र द सूत्र डिस्क्राइबिंग द तत्पुरुष समास दे आर क्वाइट बिग क्वाइट न्यूमरस विथ रेफरेंस टू द अदर समास एंड द सूत्र स्टेटेड टू एक्सप्लेन द फिनोमिना रिलेटेड टू दोज टाइप्स ऑफ समास तत्पुरुष समास ऑल्सो हैज गॉट क्वाइट अ लॉट ऑफ वराइटी एंड वी हैव स्टडीड मेनी ऑफ these samasas so far we started with the vibhakti tatpurusha and then in the vibhaktis we started with dvitiya tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and then shashti in this particular order then we studied karmadharaya samasa along with dvigu following which we studied the naya tatpurusha samasa and also ekadeshi tatpurusha samasa after that we studied the gati samasa as well as the pradi samasa followed by the upapada tatpurusha samasa that we are studying right now the formation of the tatpurusha samasa can be easily explained in the form of the equation shown on the slide where we have x and y as two different entities and separate entities in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent however these two are interrelated semantically and therefore the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and form an output which is one single unit so xy is the output formed and in this xy y acts as the head of this xy and that's why y is written in bold characters what this means is that now x y is one unit but within that y acts as a head which means that when x y is interrelated with any other external word in the sentence this interrelation of x y with other external word will happen only through y x will be interrelated with any other external element only through y when x is interrelated with any any other external word 
without going through why such a samasa is treated as an exception and it is termed as asamartha samasa. Let us now study some remaining upapada samasas. Upapada samasa is prescribed by the sutra upapadam ating 2 to 19. This sutra has got two padas, upapadam as well as ating. Upapadam is one slash one of upapada, which means the word designated as upapada, and this is designated by the sutra 3192, tatra upapadam saptamistham. Since the word upapadam appears in prathama vibhakti by the sutra, Prathama Niradishtam Samasa Upasarjanam, the Upapada will get the Upasarjana Saudhnya, thereby by the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, the Upapada will have the Purva Nipata. The Upapada will occupy the first position of the Samasa. The second word in the Sutra is Ating, which is also 1 slash 1. And a thing means which is not a thing. Eventually it means which is not a thing anta. Words continued in the sutra are sup and also sahasupa as well as samartha pada vidhihi. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. Any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. There are certain questions that arise after reading this particular meaning. What is the need of the word a thing in this particular sutra? This is the first question. What it implies is that what is achieved by this negation in the word a thing? The questions arise because when we make not a thing anta a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta because Subtingantam padam is the definition of pada, and once we negate tinganta, what remains is only a subanta. And this is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the word sup and sahasupa. So, what is the need of the word ating in the sutra? And still, Panini maintains this negation and says ating, so we are forced to think that in this sutra, the basic condition of sup saha supa does not apply. Rather, sup only with saha will apply. So the structure of such a samasa would be of the following kind, where we have two elements, the first one being a subanta ending in su, and the second one ending in a krit suffix. So when we say a thing, we refer to krit. Thing and krit both are the terms for the suffixes which are added after a verbal root dhatu. And therefore when thing is negated, what remains is krit. So the first is the purva pada ending in su and the second element is the element ending in krit suffix. So, dhatu plus krit. Suppose dhatu pratipadika yoga will apply and will delete su in the purva pada and so we have the output generated of this kind where we have the purva pada pratipadika followed by the dhatu plus krit, this element and this will be the structure of the upapada samasa. Now let us study some more suffixes stated by some more sutras in the section 3, 2, 1 up to 101 onwards. 
right now we are studying the sutra duhak kap ghash cha 3270 the words in the sutra are duhaha kap ghaha and cha the sutra reads duhak kap ghash cha 3270 the words which are part of this sutra are duhaha which is 5/1 of duha which means immediately after the verbal root duh to milk cup which is 1/1 of cup the suffix is a with k as a marker which negates the guna and p as another marker which triggers the accent also gha is 1/1 which is the substitute g consonant g and ch ch means and words continued are dhatoho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyaya 311 karmani 7/1 which means karmani upapade when karma is the upapada by tatra upapadam saptami stham 3192 also kradating is present 3193 So the meaning of the sutra is the following the suffix kap is added in the sense of karta to verbal root duh when the upapadas are related to the action of milking in the sense of karma and in this environment the final h of the verbal root is substituted by gh i repeat the suffix kap is added in the sense of karta to verbal root duh when the upapadas are related to the action of milking in the sense of a karma and in this environment the final h of the verbal root duh is substituted by gh so here are the examples when the meaning to be denoted is one who milks the desire in this say, sense we have kamam dogdhi as the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha would be kama plus am plus duha plus kap kap is prescribed by this particular sutra now samasa saudhnya takes place and then pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies so now we have kama plus 0 plus duha plus a then by the same sutra duha kap ghascha h of the verbal root dh is replaced by gh and so we have kama plus 0 plus dugha plus a and then we join them together and we get kama dugh kama dugh means kamam dogdhi one who milks the desire and the feminine form would be kama dugha similarly dharmam dogdhi will be the laukika vigraha one who milks the dharma and so the derived output would be dharma dugh in this process we follow the same procedure and we also have the feminine form dharma dugha we note that this sutra duhakap ghascha is stating two operations first the addition of the suffix kap immediately after the verbal root duh and the substitution of gh in place of h which is part of the verbal root duh let us proceed further the next sutra which we study is anyabhyopi drishyante a very unique sutra anyabhyopi drishyante 3275 in this sutra there are three padas anyabhyaha api and drishyante anyabhyaha is 5/3 of anya which means immediately after the other 
other verbal roots. Api means also and drashyante means are seen. Words continued are dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root. Pratyayaha 311, Kridating 3193. Manin, Kvanip and Vanipaha from 3275. Which continues from 3273. So the meaning of the sutra is the suffixes Manin, Kvanip, Vanip, and which are seen added in the sense of karta to other verbal roots also when there are upapadas related to the action denoted by the respective verbal roots and also when there are no upapadas. I repeat the suffixes manin, kvanip, vanip and which are seen added in the sense of a karta to other verbal roots also when there are upapadas related to the action denoted by the respective verbal roots and also when there are no upapadas. Manin is a suffix in which the suffix that is visible in the form or audible in the form is man, in kvanip one, in vanip one, and which is a zero suffix. So now, the meaning to be expressed is one who slays or one who removes nicely. Shobhanam Shranati. In this case now we have Su plus Su plus Shru plus Manin as the Alaukika Vigraha following this particular Sutra. And so, because now the Samasa Saudhnya will take place, so the Pratipadika Saudhnya will also take place and Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho will apply and will delete the Su in the Purvapada. So we have Su plus 0 plus Shru plus Man and we have Su plus 0 plus Shar plus Man and finally we get Sushar Man as the compound output which means Shobhanam Shranati, one who slays or removes nicely. Similarly, when the meaning to be conveyed is one who goes in the morning, Pratar Eti. Here we have Pratar plus Su plus E plus Kwanip. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. Now Samasa Saudhnya happens, Pratipadika Saudhnya also happens. Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho takes place. So now we have Pratar plus 0 plus E plus 1 and then Pratar plus 0 plus E is added with the augment the. So we have Pratar it 1 and the finally derived compound output is Pratar it 1 meaning the same as Pratar eti one who goes in the morning. Similarly, one who goes ahead and here we have Agre Gachati and Agre plus Su plus Gama plus Vanip, this is the Alaukika Vigraha and so we get Agre plus 0 plus Gama plus 1 and then finally Ma is substituted by A and we have Agre Ga A plus 1 and finally we get the form Agre Gavan as the compound output, one who goes ahead. Similarly, when the meaning is one who slays, the Laukika Vigraha is Yaha Reshati and here we add the suffix which and so we get Risha plus which and Resha plus which and finally derived output is resh. This is not a compound output, but this is shown to demonstrate that these suffixes are added when the upapadas exist and also when the upapadas do not exist. 
The next sutra is Kvipcha. This is 3276. Kvip Cha has got two padas, Kvip and Cha. Kvip is one slash one, which is a zero suffix. Cha means and. Words continued are Dhatoho 3191, which means immediately after a verbal root. And Pratyayaha 311, also Krada Thing 3193. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix quip is seen added in the sense of karta to any or all verbal roots. Also when there are upapadas related to the action denoted by the respective verbal roots and also when there are no upapadas in the Vedic as well as non-Vedic language. I repeat, the suffix quip is seen added in the sense of karta to any or all verbal roots also when there are upapadas related to the action denoted by the respective verbal roots and also when there are no upapadas in the Vedic as well as non-Vedic language. So the meaning is to be conveyed is one which drops from a boiler ukhayaha sram sate so we have ukha plus nasi plus sramsa plus quip and then the samasa saudhnya takes place. So the pratipadika saudhnya takes place. So supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and so we have ukha plus zero plus sramsa plus zero. Quip is a zero suffix. But because it is kit, the anuspara in sramsa gets deleted. And so we have ukhasras as the form of the pratipadika in the form of the finally derived compound output which means the same as ukhayaha sramsate, one which drops from a boiler. The next sutra that we study is 3278, supya jato nistachilye. There are four padas in the sutra, supi, ajatau, ninis, and tachilye. Supi is seven slash one, meaning subanta is the upapada, thereby no upasarga is understood as upapada. Ajatau is seven slash one, when not a generic property is denoted. Ninis is one slash one of nini, Nini means in, in the sense of an agent or karta. Tachi liye is 7 slash 1, which means in the sense of habit. Words continued are dhatoho, 3191, which means immediately after a verbal root. Pratyayaha, 311. Krudating, 3193. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix srinini is added in the sense of karta to any or all verbal roots when any subanta except the words denoting generic property are upapadas and when the compound conveys the habitual behavior. I repeat, the suffix srinini is added in the sense of karta to any or all verbal roots when any subanta except the words denoting generic property are upapadas and when the compound conveys the habitual behavior. When the compound conveys the habitual behavior. So if the meaning is one who is habitual in eating hot or cold, if this meaning is to be conveyed, we have Ushnam Bhungte as well as Shitam Bhungte as the Laukika Vigrahas. And so from Ushnam Bhungte we have Ushna plus Am plus Bhuja plus Nin. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. So Samasa Saudhnya takes place. So Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. So Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and we have Ushna plus Zero 
plus bhuja plus in as the next step in the process of derivation. Then we have ushna plus zero plus bhoja plus in and finally we get the derived compound output in the form of ushna bhojin. Ushna bhojin means ushnam bhungte, one who is habitual in eating hot food. Similarly, shitam bhungte is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha would be shita plus am plus bhoja plus nin and then samasa saudhnya takes place so pratipadika saudhnya takes place and supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and so we have shita plus zero plus bhuja plus in so then next we get shita plus zero plus bhoja plus in and finally we get the compound output in the form of shita bhojin shita bhojin means one who has a habit of eating cold food shita bhojin this means the same thing as shitam bhungte. Now we have some more upapadas and some more suffixes. But now we enter another important adhikara at 3284. So from 3284 onwards, the suffixes are stated up to 32101, which are stating the upapadas and various suffixes in the context of these upapadas. These suffixes are denoting the sense of an agent but also an additional sense of past tense. And these suffixes will be studied in the next lecture. To summarize, the suffixes in this particular section mean different karakas. By default, they mean agent, but sometimes also the most effective means, namely the karana. There are suffixes which get added after all verbal rules, thereby increasing the accommodating strength of the grammar as a system, enabling the accounting of the new forms generated in the course of time. In the grammar of Panini, Panini uses very rarely the verb in the sutras. The one used in this particular section, Drishyante, denotes the action of seeing, thereby highlighting the basic act of observation needed for a grammarian to formulate rules. We study some more suffixes and some more sutras formulating the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa in the coming lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.